Hey everybody, Father Nathan here. First whole week of Lent is over and uh, I think I'm getting more gray hair as the weeks of Lent roll on around here. But um, a lot of exciting things is always going on at Most Pure Heart of Mary. And uh, just to make things exciting, we had a water main break. Um, might as well have one, makes things more exciting. Uh, we've got spring in the air. We had um, a lot of our staff uh, was able to get the COVID vaccine, the first dose of that this week. And um, even more exciting, we uh, we're in the final design phases of the new entryway for the church. So can't be more excited to, to show you guys that here before long and um, show you that we get more restrooms, which is super exciting. And um, uh, just a couple other things. I encourage you just to continue to dive deep into Lent. Lent is such a season of grace, so many ways to grow in our faith during the season of Lent. So even if you started off poorly, um, don't give up. Dive deeper into Lent. Uh, we got lots of opportunities. we got Stations of the Cross. we got some extra evening masses you can go to and extra confession time. So um, don't give up on Lent yet. Uh, keep diving deeper into it. And uh, just two other things. Uh, we got some new protocols from the Archdiocese just a little while ago. I haven't got to read them much yet, but um, new suggestions on what to do with mass. So stay tuned as we continue to make changes and trying to get us back to normal. And if you didn't notice that the holy water is back at the church, so if you feel comfortable, uh, you can use holy water coming and going, just like the good old days. And um, and then lastly in the bulletin this week is a letter from Bishop Olmstead. He is the Bishop of the Phoenix Diocese, uh, but he grew up here in our diocese and um, it's just a great shepherd of the church. And he wrote this beautiful letter uh, for his diocese, just uh, inviting people to rediscover the Eucharist. And um, I think as we enter out of this pandemic area, I think this is gonna be an opportunity for all of us to really rediscover what the Eucharist is, why it's so important for us as Catholics, and um, just really appreciate it in our spiritual lives because it's so full of tremendous grace. And um, um, so I just invite you to read that letter, enjoy it, and uh, enjoy his words of wisdom. And, um, and we will see you soon. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. In Jesus' transfiguration, we get a glimpse of the glory that awaits us, too, when we are faithful disciples of Jesus. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this liturgy by reflecting on how willing we are to die to ourselves and to our plans and to our ideas so that we might share in resurrected life. You came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went, went and took the ram and offered it up, as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding me from your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
gracious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living my vows to the Lord presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst O Jerusalem I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is the at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, 
and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shower, shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate, and they were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. When the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So, how's your Lent going? Have you got it all figured out? What's God calling you to or away from in this holy season? Do you know yet? Sometimes we enter into the season with, uh, oh, I'll do this and 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 this. And none of it gets done. What needs to change in your life? And how do you do it? Really important questions as we make this journey. Are you still keeping your resolutions? Or as sometimes happens, oh, you know, the second or third or fourth day out, oh, I I forgot. Start again. Don't say, oh, well, Lent is wasted, it's over, it's done. But renew. Persist in the change. Whatever it might be. There are three great readings for us, or for me. I don't know about you, but I do know about me. Three great readings this weekend. Two of them, the gospel and the first reading, both raise the issue of my, our understanding frequently of how God works and getting things all figured out and then God interferes and changes things and we're lost. And in the midst of that sandwich is these great questions and statements by Paul to the Romans. Let's go back to those readings. Abraham, the binding of Isaac, as the Eastern Church would call that passage. Abraham's been told that he's going to be the father of many nations, and yet he has no heir. And we have to understand that having an heir Someone who will carry on your line, your name, is, was vital. And so, at a hundred, he's visited by angels who tell him that in a year's time, he'll have a son. His wife is 80 plus, and she laughs. That's why his name is Isaac. But he does have a son, and it's Isaac. It is the the gift. Oh, okay, God is faithful, yes. And now God says, take your son, your only one, and offer him up as a holocaust at a place that I'm going to show you. I wonder what that journey up the mountain with 
Isaac with fire, with wood. Wonder what was going on in Abraham's head. What are you doing, God? How can you, what, what did you say? And maybe it wasn't that at all, because Abraham was a man of faith. And ultimately, he gets to the point that says, God, I don't know how, but God, you do it. I trust you. And before God, uh, I, uh, Abraham can offer Isaac, God intervenes again. Abraham, Abraham, yes, uh, yes, Lord, I'm listening. Don't do anything to him. And he sees the ram, he makes the ram the sacrifice. And coming down the mountain from that place must have been again, what now, God, do you ask? In the gospel, we have Jesus take his three best buds, Peter and James and John, up a mountain too. A place of, of closeness to God. And there he's changed. He's not that uh, carpenter. He, he begins to glow. His, his clothes change. And pretty soon he's talking with two biggies. Elijah and Moses, the lawgiver and the prophet, who represented the basis, the foundation for Israel. And it's Jesus who's talking with them. <laughs> In the Gospel from Mark, it says, um, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. That's Peter speaking. Let's make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. They, uh, Peter, uh, figured, well, we can, we can keep it this way. So it'll just be Peter, James, John, Jesus, Elijah, Moses, and that's it. And everything will, will stay in control, and we don't have to worry about anything else. It won't, it'll be less confusing. And pretty soon, in the midst of their terror, Elijah and Moses aren't there anymore. And it's just Jesus. A cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved Son. Important words follow for us. Listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. Then, their trip down the mountain was also filled with some wonderment. They're coming down, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant was outside of their experience, their realm. What do we do with this? We who live on this side of the resurrection have a different understanding. But we still work with God in the same way. As long as we can control God, and God does it our way, we're fine. But Lent is about us giving up all of that control of God and letting God take care of us. Helping us to reform our lives. Because, as Paul says in that marvelous few verses from 
the book of Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else with him? When our world feels like it's going down the wrong path, and we seek to grab control as best we can, we need to let go and let God. Lent is about that letting go of all of this stuff, things, ideas, concepts, and opening ourselves to this God who loves us so profoundly that he didn't even spare his own son because of love for us. And when we begin to recognize that and the power of that love in our lives, then our Lenten journey will come alive, will be fruitful, will be full of joy because we will experience like those who are making this journey in this Lenten time to the sacraments of initiation, baptism, and confirmation, and Eucharist ultimately, experience new life. That's God's goal anyway. If we're open to it, let go of the things that impede God's presence and God's work in your life. Fast from those things that separate you from God and one another. And give what you can, be it time, be it treasure, be it whatever, to further that along. And your Lent will be joyful and your Easter beyond your wildest imaginings. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To the God who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for us, let us offer our intercessions. For Pope Francis, 
the bishops, and other leaders of the church, that they may always lead us to the glory of our heavenly homeland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ may make us aware of the presence and glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the lonely, the oppressed, that through our practical care, they may see the favored Son of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may find it wonderful to worship in the company of the saints of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Mary Yanan, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithfully departed, especially Jerome Dolsky, husband of Dorothy Dolsky, and Robert Stitch, brother of Doris Osland, that they may enjoy the blessed vision of divine glory forever, and for the poor souls in purgatory, and for those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you clothed your Son, Jesus, in transfigured glory. Grant these our prayers that one day we might also share in that same glory. We make our prayer through the same Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you Send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to this table, Lord, 
confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and, the, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <clears throat> thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ you lead and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, with a river you the sea, with a river you the sea. Christ as Lord of all we do, Christ as Lord of all we do. Light of life beyond conceiving, mighty spirit of our Lord, give due strength to our believing, give us faith to faith to live your word. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. We need ushers to help before and after Mass, as well as uh, with taking up the collection on a rotating schedule. So please contact Marie in the parish office if you're willing to volunteer. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let by the 
Spirit of our God, we go to fast and pray with Christ into the wilderness. We join his Paschal way. Rend not your garments, rend your hearts, turn back your lives to me. Thus says our kind. Hey everybody, Father Nathan here. First whole week of Lent is over and uh, I think I'm getting more gray hair as the Weeks of Lent roll on around here, but um, a lot of exciting things is always going on at Most Pure Heart of Mary, and uh, just to make things exciting, we had a water main break. Uh, might as well have one. Makes things more exciting. Uh, we've got spring in the air. We had um, a lot of our staff uh, was able to get the COVID vaccine, the first dose of that this week, and um, even more exciting, we uh, are in the final design phases of the new entryway for the church, so can't be more excited to, to show you guys that here before long, and um show you that we get more restrooms, which is super exciting. And um, uh, just a couple other things. I encourage you just to continue to dive deep into Lent. Lent is such a season of grace, so many ways to grow in our faith during the season of Lent. So even if you started off poorly, um, don't give up. Dive deeper into Lent. Uh, we got lots of opportunities. we got Stations of the Cross. we got some extra evening masses you can go to and extra confession time. So um, don't give up on Lent yet. Uh, keep diving deeper into it. And uh, just two other things. Uh, we got some new protocols from the Archdiocese just a little while ago. I haven't got to read them much yet, but uh, new suggestions on what to do with Mass. So stay tuned as we continue to make changes and trying to get us back to normal. And if you didn't notice that the holy water is back at the church, so if you feel comfortable, uh, you can use holy water coming and going, just like the good old days. And, um, and then lastly in the bulletin this week is a letter from... Bishop Olmstead, he is the bishop of the Phoenix Diocese, uh, but he grew up here in our diocese and um, is just a great shepherd of the church. And he wrote this beautiful letter uh, for his diocese, just uh, inviting people to rediscover the Eucharist. And um, I think as we enter out of this pandemic area, I think this is going to be an opportunity for all of us to really rediscover what the Eucharist is, why it's so important for us as Catholics, and um, just really a appreciate it in our spiritual lives because it's so full of tremendous grace. And um, um, so I just invite you to read that letter, enjoy it, and uh, enjoy his words of wisdom. And, um, and we will see you soon. God bless you.